This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Danny West is with us here from Hogsports.com, part of the 24-7 Sports Network, football recruiting extraordinaire. And we appreciate your time, Danny. Good to have you on Halftime again. How you doing? Good to be back on with you. I'm doing well. Danny. Okay, Danny, oh, i got up, a man? question right off the top. Clay. We, yeah, we got Clay with us, too. Camp. Say again, Clay. Are you going to deer camp this weekend? Yeah, yeah. At some point, I'll, I'll be able to sneak out, and I'm really looking forward to it. Planning on trying to hunt be. hard, man. Trying to hunt really hard this year. We've, we've got a couple pretty good ones on camera, so we'll see what happens. And I'd see. I know Danny, so I knew. He, he, he can predict my movements. I can predict his. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, man, we're looking forward to it. Hopefully, uh, hopefully. I mean, you can never argue with too many commitments and you know good recruiting news. But hopefully, maybe they'll give me a few days this week, this weekend. Well, they got some good news on Sunday. I mean, it wasn't all a lost weekend for Arkansas football. Got a commitment from a defensive end, Kavion Henderson. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, six three, two thirty five, out of Leeds, Alabama. And if I'm not mistaken, is that Charles Barkley's hometown? Maybe. I'll look Anyways, at this. I don't know. <laughs> irrelevant, but yeah, six three two thirty five out of Leeds. Man, you know they, as you mentioned there, they needed some good news on Sunday, and and the timing of it may have seemed a little bit unusual. You know, after a loss like that, to get such good news is is a pretty good surprise. But Kavion is a guy that you know they offered, I want to say January twenty third, uh, following his visit here, his first trip to Fayetteville in January. They got him back a couple of months later. And basically, he committed at that point and, and kind of kept it quiet for several months. He came back again for at least one more visit that, that I'm aware of. So this is a case where, you know, you got on him early, made him feel like a real priority for this year's class. And, um, you know, it, it stuck with him. Uh, I think that really meant a lot to him, even after Alabama and Oklahoma came calling for him. Georgia was in there for him. He loved what he felt here at Arkansas. And, you know, I, you got to give the entire staff a lot of credit for this, but I think Deke Adams did a really good job as well as one of your current commitments in the 23 class, Dallas Young, who's also from Alabama. He kind of helped make sure Kavion was able to get to campus a few times, so that's always helpful too. But really a big pickup. I know a lot of people have, have been down over the weekend, and rightfully so. You ought to be after that one. But, yeah, that was a nice little – you know, a, a boost of morale, I guess you could call it, on Sunday afternoon. What What is quick the... twitch guys? Quick twitch guys? Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a very quick edge rusher. You're going to like this guy, Clay, quite a bit. I I would encourage you. I could send you his film, but I think you're really going to like this type. He's explosive, long arms, and mean. You know, he's got a high motor type guy. So yeah, you know, he's a four star type, and and I think that's justified based on film and, and production. But uh, probably a guy who's going to have a chance to continue. Uh, moving up in the rankings. What is the word with uh, some of the recruits? Have we had anybody decommit or anybody acting like that? I mean, it, it's got to be uh, a bad bad taste in some of yeah. their mouths right now. I'm sure. But, uh, yeah, so far, Matt, no decommits. You know, I always tell people a loss like that, you know, even a win, a big win. Kids don't let one game determine, you know, where they're going to spend three or four years, and, and that, that should be the case. But, man... I'd be lying if I said that one's not going to catch up to them in some capacity. I mean, you can't lose a game like that. And it's hard to recruit against some of these SEC teams. They'll use any amount of ammo that you put out there against you. And that one certainly, um, you know, that one doesn't help you. I'll put it that way. And and then what about we got to get to six? Talk about recruiting. If we don't get to six, how, how bad does that hurt Ooh. recruiting? Man, I hate to even think of it right now. I man. think we're going to get to be, six, uh, though, uh, Danny. I think we're we're going to find a way go. to win one of these three. But 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 man, if, we, I, if we don't get a bowl game in, that just that hurts, man. Yeah, from a perception standpoint, I think you know perception and and momentum are really very real things when it comes to recruiting. I mean, kids pay attention to you know maybe not necessarily every box score, but at the end of the year, if you're not one of those seems like a hundred teams that make a bowl game now. Man, it, it it sure is, you know, it's a rough spot to be in nowadays because, I mean, everybody, it seems like, has positive momentum in the SEC, and you're trying to 
trying to compete against these guys. And last year, I think he finished 13th in the conference and in recruiting rankings. He needed this year to be a really good one. And, you know, they've dealt with some things. I'll give them that. A ton of injuries, a lot of bad luck. But at, at the same time, buddy, you got to win the ones you should have. And now, mathematically, you kind of put yourself in a spot here. So I'm with you, Matt. I think they will get one more, but I couldn't. I don't know which one. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know which one yet. I, I I like the fact that we we get uh we get LSU after after Alabama. Uh, talk talk about maybe some out of state recruits or, or is, uh, any any help in that defensive backfield. Yeah, I like their cornerback class. You know, I say that now. I I could look like a fool if y'all ever play this back a year from now, and some of these kids don't pan out. But I do. I, I like what they've done at corner in this year's class. You got Jalen Braxton, a four star out of. Uh, Frisco, Texas, Lone Star High School. He's about six foot, one seventy, plenty of size there. But four star type guy could have gone anywhere in the country. And then you've got a couple of highly rated three stars that I'm really high on. R.J. Johnson, kid out of Georgia, and uh, there, there's one more there, Dallas Young, who I mentioned earlier out of Gardendale, Alabama. He's he's almost a four star himself. So I, I like what they've done there. They've got a really good linebacker group, kind of underrated in my opinion. I would like to see a little bit more on the lines of scrimmage. You know, Clay, we talk about that all the time, but I think there's still room for improvement there. They're making strides, as we talked about with Kavion. You know, that ended a really long drought of Arkansas not having any four-star defensive linemen since 2019. So he's your first one, and he won't be here for a long time still. You've got to hold on to him. So you'd, you'd still like to see some more on those two groups, but everything else, man, it's really a complete class. I, I like the tight ends, the receivers, running back, and I think they've got a, a fine quarterback in Malachi Singleton. Bright spot Saturday was Quincy McAdoo, you know, and yeah, you know, you know the you know the positions that these kids play uh, in high school, and maybe, and I wonder what 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 would what did you think watching McAdoo play cornerback and play it so well? I mean, he looked like a guy that had been playing cornerback almost all year long. I was surprised, and, and you know, the other thought I had was, well, let's see what some of these other young guys can do too. What else do we not know about? You know, but. You know, it seems like a, a perfect fit. I mean, when you look at him, he looks like a big SEC corner out there, so why not? But to be honest with you, Phil, that, it surprised me that he, you know, he could go out there as a true freshman first-timer and, and have the game that he did. I mean, he's going to get beat and, and did on Saturday, but that's to be expected. And in today's game, it's normal to get beat every now and then. But, man, I was I was tickled to death for Quincy. I mean, you yeah, obviously you wish Arkansas could have came out on top, but he was the bright spot in my opinion. He's a stud. I'm glad he's a Razorback. I think he's only going to get better. And, yeah, if there was a bright spot, that would have been his play. Uh, and, and I think if we had got that game to overtime, Danny, I think we would we had the momentum. I agree. Yeah. I agree with you on that. I, man, it kind of reminded you, it, it you know, down below, uh, I was standing on the field down below before the game kicked off about 45 minutes and it just felt dead you know i looked across at liberty sideline and they couldn't wait for that game to kick off they'd been waiting two weeks for it and on arkansas they were waiting when schedule release day came out they saw that arkansas that that was their game yeah (laughs) yeah they had it circled and and rightfully so man they got a pretty good team over there but still you you got to win the ones you're supposed to and arkansas despite all the slow starts and how ugly that first half was probably still should have came back and won that game and Boy, they simply didn't get it done, Matt. Any any quarterbacks out there that are, are looking at Arkansas? Yeah, they've got one uh, for the current class, Malachi Singleton that I mentioned earlier, four-star type guy, a kid out of Kennesaw, Georgia, North Cobb High School, so that makes two years in a row. You've got a four-star out of Kennesaw, North Cobb High School. That's a pretty good program to get your foot in. And then for next year's class, man, they've got probably a handful of guys, D.J. Lagway, Michael Hawkins, couple of four or five star types there walker white from right here within the state down at little rock christian um a lot of family ties to arkansas been up here several times old miss could be tough there to to beat for the in-state kid but they're on the right ones there i mentioned three there that you know i think um, all three of those would be realistic options at, at this point and probably michael hawkins out of allen texas it might be an early favorite. I think it's way too early to, to start naming favorites, but four-star kid out of Allen, Texas, keep an eye on Michael Hawkins for the 24 class. We got big, you know, they only have two home games left, so 
<laughs> I'm assuming you're going to have, there are going to be plenty of visitors that are coming up uh, this weekend. I mean, 11 o'clock in the morning, I know Coach Pittman was talking about how that, you know, the, the, they won a night game. They got a night game for Ole yeah. Miss, so they got a chance to spend more time with the kids. Does that change who visits this weekend and maybe they get them to come for the Ole Miss weekend? Well, they've actually got, a so far, a better group, in my opinion, uh, for this coming week somehow. So uh, we mentioned Michael Hawkins there. He's going to be back this week. Uh, Devon Mitchell, a 2025 tight end, almost a five-star guy, if I'm not mistaken at this point. But, um, yeah, Max Anderson, a four-star offensive tackle out of Texas. Alan Singleton out of Manny, Louisiana. He's a borderline five-star. Really a good group coming in this weekend. And then, of course, for Ole Miss, they'll have – several more as well but yeah i was i'm pleasantly surprised by how this uh 11 o'clock game is shaping up for arkansas i thought it'd be a little bit tougher as well but seemed like a lot of these kids committed to it uh well before you know the game time was announced and um you know a lot of these kids say hey if we're buying plane tickets and putting money aside we're going to make the trip regardless of kickoff time and just make it work so that's that's working out for you know the razorbacks this weekend when, uh, Danny, when, when do you talk about the transfer portal or is, are they looking, how does that work? Do they start looking around at, 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 at kids, uh, that, that are going to transfer and when, when can you talk about kids that might be transferring in that have played, uh, some college football? Sure. Yeah. I think that December 5th date, December 5th. obviously there's windows now throughout the year, you know, um, May 1st through May 15th. You see a lot of kids now, they're going to be going into the portal and then, uh, I want to say it's December 5th this year. This uh, this year, they're calling it Portal Monday. Kind of everybody's going to be watching the portal on December 5th. So I think we're probably a little under a month away from things getting hot and, hot and heavy again for Arkansas Transfer Portal. But, you know, defensive line, cornerbacks, uh, really all DB spots in the back end there. I think you could see quite a bit of movement. Football is back, and Bet Online remains your number one source for all your football betting needs this season. You'll find the latest odds, matchup info, player news, and game trends. And as your continued source for all sports wagering info, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, live scores, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events like MLB, MMA, tennis, boxing, and even golf. Head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 100% welcome Welcome bonus with your first deposit. Make sure to use the promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That's B L E A V. Bet online where the game starts.